Secretary Panetta, you are now recognized for your opening statement. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Distinguished members of the committee, thanks for inviting me to testify uh, on the increasing threat posed by the People's Republic of China and its ongoing efforts to undermine the United States and allied interests around the world. And thank you for having me join with my good friend, uh, Mike Pompeo, uh, who we worked together when when he was uh, in my job at, uh, as director of the CIA and continued to be in touch during the time he was Secretary of State. And Mike and I are good friends and I'm glad that we are here to be able to present our views. I also want to thank this committee. The fact that you are a bipartisan committee working on this issue is incredibly important to our foreign policy. And I want to commend you for the work that you've done and particularly the report you issued on economic competition. Look, we live in a dangerous world in which tyrants and autocrats and terrorists are challenging and attacking democracies. And so they're threatening our values, they're threatening our interests and our national security. When Putin brutally invaded Ukraine, it was for no other reason but that he did not believe the people of Ukraine had the right to decide how to govern themselves. I believe Ukraine is fighting not just to protect their democracy, but to protect the concept of democracy in the 21st century. When Hamas attacked and brutally killed innocent men, women, and children in Israel, they, like Al-Qaeda on 9-11, made clear that they had no regard for the dignity of life. And Hamas's leadership does need to be destroyed, just as we targeted and destroyed Al-Qaeda leadership. We are facing an aligned group of dictators and autocrats from around the world, united in their determination to undermine our democracy. China is exploiting these conflicts to advance its own narrative of Western decline. She explicitly said the East is rising and the West is declining and that China will replace the United States as a world power. I've met with Xi multiple times during the time I was in office, here and in Beijing. He's smart, he can be very diplomatic, he's committed to an aggressive China. But it is important that we never underestimate Xi Jinping because he will use every opportunity to undermine the stability of the United States and the West. He will steal our intellectual property, conduct economic espionage, have extensive intelligence. I believe they've planted malware within our own computer networks. He will use artificial intelligence for disinformation campaigns. He will militarize the, can continue to militarize the South China Sea. He will modernize the People's Liberation Army. They have the largest navy. They're producing large numbers of manned and unmanned aircraft, ICBMs. They're expanding their nuclear arsenal. They have 500 warheads, and they hope to double that by the end of the decade. As a result, they are not simply developing what could be called the general purpose military. They're developing a military that can employ the threat and the use of force. Xi Jinping recently said the reunification of the motherland is a historical necessity. And so there's no question they threaten Taiwan. The president was correct to say that we will defend Taiwan militarily if it comes to that. I have always believed strongly that when the U.S. gives its word, it must stand by its word. That is the essence of deterrence. The bottom line is we are facing an increasingly aligned group of autocrats around the world. And the fact is that they are now having dual use technologies that are being spread with Russia, Iran, China, and North Korea. While this alignment of autocrats is troubling, the good news is that 
It does not even come close to approaching the strength and depth and breadth of the United States global network of allies and partners. Look, some have suggested that our relationship with China is improving, and there's no question we've had increased military and economic dialogue. But make no mistake, the only way to try to avoid war with China, the only way to deal with China is from strength, from strength. Both China and Russia became more aggressive when they sensed weakness on the part of the U.S. And for that reason, we must take strong action to arm and train Taiwan, train, train Taiwan to defend itself, to strengthen our force posture, to invest in the next generation of military technology, to bolster our, our alliances, and to maintain strong export controls on critical technologies. And I must say, we must demonstrate that our democracy is strong and that we can govern. For that reason, it is incredibly important that this Congress pass the supplemental request and provide necessary military aid to Ukraine, Israel, and Taiwan. To fail would send a terrible message of weakness to adversaries and allies alike. We'll be playing China's game. And let me make clear, that those who believe the United States can simply back away from our commitment in Ukraine, you cannot be weak on Ukraine and be tough on China. In conclusion, let me just say, I, I tell the students at the Panetta Institute that in our democracy, we govern either by leadership or by crisis. If we fail to provide leadership, then we will govern by crisis. And the price of that is the loss of the trust of the American people in our democracy. This committee provides hope that we can govern and work together in a real sense. Our democracy and our national security depend on each of you for your leadership necessary to govern and protect our country. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Secretary.